Hello everyone, this is Nathan Lindorf with The Rational Independent. Today we join the Business Insider as they take a victory lap after Donald Trump's recent New York fraud conviction. And conviction is a strong word, let's say civil finding. All right, so Business Insider takes a new tack on this. Let's see where they go with it. AOC's questions years ago helped spark the investigation into Trump's business now he's been ordered to pay $355 million. Oh dear. I do like taking a look at these photos. Um, I, I think that's the ex-girlfriend Crazy Eyes. I've heard these rumored, fable that they are out there, but I'm going to go ahead and call that the ex-girlfriend Crazy Eyes. The years-long legal saga between Donald Trump and Attorney General Letitia James is finally over after a judge ordered the former president, his company, and associates to pay the state nearly $364 million in penalties. So there's this thing where in the leftist narrative, they want to make things true by just stating them as true. The simple facts of this case are, it's not over. It's not even close to over. Guess what happens now? Donald Trump appeals. And if that appeal fails, he'll appeal again. This is not even close to over. And yet somehow the left wants to take the victory lap and say, the years long saga is over. It's over because this is a convenient place to stop the narrative where it looks like we won a great big victory against the big bad orange main, bad orange man. Not to mention that the drama around all this is that the Attorney General Letitia James, she campaigned on a promise of finding something she could prosecute Donald Trump over. She basically said, elect me and my office will hunt through his whole world looking for something that we can get him on. That's mob justice through the halls of power. That's horrendous corruption. That's not okay. And yet that's all just glossed over and we call it a legal saga. I always assume Business Insider would be at least partially objective, but I found a lot of their reporting is just nonsense. And the case may have never happened if years ago, a newly elected member of Congress from Trump's home state hadn't grilled Michael Cohen on Trump's finances. The whole Michael Cohen thing is a drama unto itself and worth a deep dive, one I don't have time for right now. But let's just take what they're saying at face value and go from there. The former president will now have to personally cough up $355 million. No, his organization will have to. These are not the same things. This shows that the author doesn't know what they're talking about. They're reporting on business as an insider. That's the name of the outlet. And they don't know the difference between personal funds and company funds. <sighs> Whatever. Okay. $355 million and comply with other penalties for what New York State... New York Supreme Court Judge Arthur Engeron described as frauds that shock the conscience in his Friday verdict. People project what they feel inside themselves. People, this is a law of human nature, and it's even more so among the left, those who are true zealots. They project what they have inside themselves onto other people. It's not, it's more the rule than the exception that the words that come out of someone who's at this kind of zealot level of belief in their, their own righteousness, what comes out of their mouth is more of a reflection on them than whoever they're talking about. I could lay out this whole situation and make the case that this verdict is a fraud that shocks the conscience. I could use his exact verbiage to describe his actions. If I can do that, that's a pretty good sign that he's projecting what he's doing onto somebody else. The Trump Organization said it's gross miscarriage of justice, Trump will likely appeal, almost guaranteed. Dozens of details that have come out of this case, the gag order drama, oh yeah, um, mitigating presidents who are running for re-election, mitigating their free speech over a civil trial where there's no jury involved and a runaway judge can do whatever he wants. Yeah, that should lead to some drama. I think the First Amendment's kind of important. Okay, it may be hard to remember how tr Trump's business practices ended up being scrutinized in the first place. A fresh and ambitious AOC following up on questions 
to Michael Cohen about Trump's business practices. Okay, so what are we talking about here, all right? So Cohen is a former Trump lawyer, sentenced in 2018 to three years in prison for crimes he committed while working for Trump, testified before the House Oversight and Reform Committee. Ocasio-Cortez asked Cohen if the former president had ever inflated his assets. Yes, Cohen answered. Who else knew the president did this? And then he lists some principles from the Trump organization. And, of course, the judge went ahead and lumped in a lot of Trump's associates and children in, in all of these, uh, in these penalty findings. Of course, Michael Cohen is apparently now swinging for the other team. I thank Judge Engeron for his acknowledgement of my veracity and hope this helps to expose Trump and all these other people's their never-ending lies and attacks about me. Oh, he made a statement to Business Insider. Truth always rises. Uh, Letitia James, who's the AG, gave a nod to Ocasio-Cortez's line of questioning when she filed her suit in 2022. I will remind everyone that this investigation only started after Michael Cohen, his former lawyer, testified before Congress and shed light on this misconduct. So it only became apparent in a political context when someone who was a former ally and is now a political enemy cast aspersions on Trump's character which led a runaway judge to go chase down a crime that had no victims for a common business practice that isn't prosecuted for anybody else, that the state, uh, in fact, I should find this, that the state governor recently had to assure and say, don't worry, we're not going to prosecute anyone else for this practice, only Donald Trump. Let's see if we can find that quote. But don't worry, it's, it's totally legit and above board. Uh, AOC, Trump, and James reps did not immediately respond to requests for comment from Business Insider. Okay, let's try and find that quote, because I heard about that quote, but I have not heard it. We've got Kevin O'Leary back with us, O'Leary Ventures Chairman, Shark Tank Investor. You know, Kevin, you had mentioned, and it was a very profound kind of comment, that, you know, some of these other businesses do have right to be concerned, whether they like Donald Trump or not. Maybe you can elaborate on that. Well, this this award, um, I mean, just leaving the whole Trump thing out of it and, and seeing what occurred here, and, and I'm, I'm no different than any other investor. I'm shocked at this. I, I can't even understand or fathom uh, the, the decision at all. It, it, there's no rationale for it. And so let me give you a real-time uh, experience I'm having regarding this, and I'm not the only one. It doesn't matter what the governor says. New York was already a loser state, like California is a loser state. There are many loser states because of policy, high taxes, uncompetitive regulation. It was already on the top of the list of being a loser state. I would never invest in New York now, and I'm not the only person saying that. And here's a real-time situation. In development in real estate right now, the hottest asset class is very high-end data centers. They cost anywhere from two and a half to three and a half billion each. They're very expensive. They require low power. You need permits. But most of the major institutions in the world need more data centers, and that's why developers like me are doing this. Now, you need power. So New York has Niagara Falls. Normally, you'd consider that to put in one of these facilities, create 400 jobs, five more jobs for each of one of those for auxiliary services. I can't go to New York. So I'm going to Oklahoma, North Dakota, West Virginia. Governor Stitt, Kevin Stitt, my staff have met with him. Governor Bergen, the same thing. Governor Justice, those are winner states. They don't do things like this. I have to syndicate that debt and all that equity. We're talking billions of dollars here. Do you think any foreign institution or any private equity firm or any pension fund would touch New York? No, and that's why New Yorkers should be concerned. The fine people of New York should ask themselves, why are we such a loser state? How I don't have big patience for Kevin O'Leary, but I think he's speaking truth here. This is an anti-business decision, of New which New York makes many. But this is not limited to Donald Trump. Once you've set the precedent, then you are able to use that same precedent the next time it comes up, especially if it ends up allowing... New York State to seize assets. I mean, the simple truth is if you can't get enough revenue from your tax base because your tax base is shrinking and your services are too big and your debt levels are too high, 
You can't borrow any more money. You can't tax any more money. The next thing up, this is not news. This is repeated in a cycle over and over around the world, is seizure of private assets, nationalization or socialization of private assets, turning them into government assets to be consumed by the Leviathan of government services. That's the path that New York State is on. And this is one step towards it. I mean, the, the blatant political corruption is horrible. He referenced the governor's statement. I wonder if it was written instead of verbal because I don't see it here. I just got off the phone with Attorney General Tish James and spoke to her about how this sends a strong message that in the state of New York, businesses, business people who commit fraud and to hide their assets will be caught and prosecuted. Whether you're the president of the United States, a past president and forever past president of the United States, or you're an ordinary business person, no one above, is above the law here in the state of New York. And I congratulate her and her effort for making sure that that is a message that is heard loud and clear, not just here in New York, but across this entire nation. I just... Well, that sounds like she wants to go after everybody. Well, the good news is, is I know many of the business people in New York City, and by and large, they're honest people. And they're not trying to hide their assets, and they're following the rules. And so this judge determined that Donald Trump did not follow the rules. He was prosecuted. And I think that this is really uh, an extraordinarily unusual circumstance that the law-abiding and rule-following New Yorkers who are business people have nothing to worry about because uh, they're very different than Donald Trump and his behavior. So as we stare at the crazy eyes that kicked off all of this. So there you go. There's Governor Hochul speaking on this. There's Kevin O'Leary giving the investor side of things. There's the politicians jabbering on about this. Either you have an environment where the rule of law is supported or you don't. And it looks like more and more in New York State, you don't got it. Take Trump out of this circumstance. It doesn't, I, I don't even care about the Donald Trump of it all. This is a circumstance that either you have a bunch more people to go chase after because you have a corrupt business practice that is spread throughout New York and beyond, or admit that you targeted someone for political reasons. Both of those are bad, but at least be honest about it. Anyway, this is Nathan Lindorf with The Rational Independent. This is my Reddit rant. Good luck out there.